Well, welcome everybody to Life Changers International Church. I'm so grateful to be with you today. And we are going to lean in, as Olivia was talking about. We are leaning in like John leaned in to Jesus' bosom and found peace there and found rest and found his calling and his destiny. Same place that we find our calling and our destiny. It really is in the arms of the Father. It's in the arms of Jesus. Our greatest calling is to spend time with him. Our greatest calling is to be with him, to be in relationship with God, to be in fellowship with God, and to allow that fellowship and relationship that we have with him to spill over into our lives with the people that God has surrounded us with. Let that relationship and that closeness spill over into this world. This world is in dire need of a, of a savior, but they're in dire need of knowing the true Jesus, the real Jesus, not a Jesus that is depicted by religion, not a Jesus that is de depicted by man's creation, but the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the ages, the Jesus that was and is and is to come, the one that is Worthy, we, as we sang that song, worthy you were, worthy you are, worthy you shall be forever. That's the Savior. That's Jesus. He is love. He is the fullness of the Father. He's the fullness of the Spirit in bodily form when he came to this earth, the fullness of love. And he wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. I have a word for you today. And as I let it unfold, I want to just pray for you. I want to pray for your healing in Jesus' name. Receive healing in your body right where you are. Receive healing in your mind. Receive healing in your emotions. Receive healing in your relationships. Receive healing. I just prophesy over you. Healing comes. Blessing comes. Miracles come. Opportunities come. Wisdom comes. All of these things are already inside of you as a born again child of God, but I'm calling them forth out of you to come forth from within you, to stir up those gifts that are in you. There's a gift of healing working right now in your life. There's a gift of miracles in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. If you're a child of God, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives in you. He doesn't visit. He moves in and he stays. And I prophesy words from the Holy Spirit, comfort from the Holy Spirit, wisdom from the Holy Spirit, strength from the Holy Spirit, blessing through the Holy Spirit. Right now, I prophesy peace. I say to the storms around you, peace, be still. I say to the storms in this earth, peace, be still. The storms of war, peace, be still. The storms of disease, peace, be still. The storms of uncertainty and financial insecurity, peace, be still. The storms of strife in your home and in your relationships, peace, be still. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive that. Believe that. We can prophesy to one another like that. We can speak to our mountains like that. We have that power, we have that authority because we belong to Christ and he's made us joint heirs with him. Boy, I love God because he first loved me. I love him because he hears me. I love him because he'll never give up on me. And that's exactly how he is towards you. And I've spent most of the last 10 or 15 years teaching people about the love of God. I'm planning on spending the next 10 or 15 speaking more on the love of God, continuing to talk about the love of God, that God is love, because what I'm about to talk about this morning for you, this evening, whenever you're watching, you'll only want to do this, what I'm going to share with you, you'll only want to do this if you understand how much he loves you. You only want to do this if you believe 
that he is love. You'll only want to do this if you believe in the beauty of Jesus, if you believe in the love of the Father, if you believe in the acceptance that comes through Jesus Christ. You're accepted. You're invited. You're welcome. You're accepted and beloved. You're part of the family of God. So I want to talk to you about how to spend time with God, how to spend time with God. I'm not trying to tell you you better spend more time with God. No, I'm trying to tell you how to spend time with God. Because God's presence is with us all the time. God's spirit lives in us. So how do we practically spend time with God? What does it mean since he's always in us? He'll never leave us or forsake us. What does it mean to spend time with him? And I I sort of broke it down into six or seven things that I want to share with you today. Simple steps to spending time with God. But again, you might say, well, I don't know. This is the kind of message I don't want to hear because I don't have that much time. Well, first of all, spending time with God has nothing to do with how much time you have. Spending time with God has to do with how much time he has because he has eternity. And any moment that you take to praise him, any moment you take to acknowledge him, any moment you take to speak to him, any moment you take to worship him, it will come back to you. How? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It's funny how we believe that verse. Well, at least Christians try to believe that verse, say they believe in that verse in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We use that and we think of that verse sometimes just in the area of finances. And yet if we would realize this isn't talking about this is not limited. Give is an action that can be done with anything. You can give time, you can give money, you can give encouragement, you can give praise you can there's a lot you can give there's boy there's so many things you can give you can give wisdom you can give an answer so this truth about what we give to God whatever it is it'll be given back to it'll be given back it's a truth in the universe even if a person doesn't even believe in God when they give something it's given back to them When you give people a hard time, you'll eventually get a hard time given to you. If you give people grace and space, it'll eventually come back to you. If you give money, it'll come back to you. People, again, people that aren't even Christians are experiencing what they call karma. We know it to be sowing and reaping. We know it to be planting and harvesting, giving, and it will be given because it is a being given to you is a reaction. It's a reflex of giving. We give because he first freely gave to us. Anything you give to God, he multiplies time. Spending time with God is believe in the miracle of the gift of time. Some of you've heard me talk about the gift of time. You might have seen me on TikTok talking about the gift of time. When you give God time, it'll come back to you. When you give yourself time, you won't beat yourself up so bad. You won't beat yourself up at all when you give other people time. Give people time. Maybe they're not where you need them to be, but give them time. Give God time. He's never late. He might not seem early, but he's never late. And even if he did come late, he'll fix whatever whatever bad things happened because he was late, quote unquote. He'll fix it. He went to go and see Lazarus and on his way Lazarus died. But that didn't stop Jesus from going to Lazarus's tomb and raising Lazarus from the dead, because whatever it seems like God's late about, he can always make up for with resurrection power. So how to spend time with God. And really, I'm talking about intimacy with God. How do we spend 
time with God in a way that we're experiencing intimacy with him. I've got a few things and I'll just give them to you. And hopefully you'll be able to write them down. Remember these things because they will stay with you the rest of your life. When we embrace intimacy with God, it means a few things and we do that in a few ways. Number one, we come to him boldly. Number one, how to spend time with God, come to him boldly. Boy, Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 is a foundational scripture for me. Come to God boldly. It says in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16. Therefore, let us draw near with boldness. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Boy, I think this verse is so undervalued and so underappreciated and so underpreached. It's not preached enough. It's not thought of enough. It's not spoken enough. We get to draw near boldly. We get to come boldly. I think it says in the King James, come boldly or the new King, come boldly to the throne of grace. How is it that we can come boldly? Because look at what he says in verse 15 of Hebrews chapter four, for we do not have a high priest that does not sympathize with our weaknesses. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize. It's empathy here. Sympathy, empathy is the is the feeling and the, the meaning of this of this verse. We do not have a high priest who doesn't or can't empathize with our weaknesses. He can. He knows what it is to have weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So we we must realize we don't come to God because we're so confident. We don't come to God because we've been holy. We don't come to God because we deserve the right to go to the father. We come to him boldly because we have a high priest who represents us. And whenever a pre whenever people wanted to go to God that in the Old Testament, they had to go through the high priest. And in our case, as new covenant believers, as the family of God, we can we our high priest is Jesus. And therefore, because Jesus was tempted in all things as we are yet without sin, he's made a way for us to come through him. We get to come through Jesus. The father comes to us through Jesus and we come to the father through Jesus and we get to come boldly because our high priest has paved the way and made the way for us. I like what he says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, we have boldness to enter the holiest place by the blood of Jesus. Boy, this is so critical that you get a hold of this when we're, I'm talking about how to spend time with God. And one of the ways we spend time with God is to come boldly to his throne of grace. He sits on a throne, but it's a throne of grace. It's not a throne of judgment. It's a throne of grace. But he says here what right we have. How do we have the right to enter boldly to the holy place, the holiest place doesn't even just say the holy place, the holiest place. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holy, the holiest. Where do we get that boldness from? By the blood of Jesus. How can we be bold and, and go to God at any time? He said, come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Are you in a time of need right now? Come boldly. You got a need for healing. Come boldly. Father, thank you for my healing. You have a need for wisdom. Come boldly. Father, thank you. As you sit on the throne of grace, I ask you for wisdom. I ask you for favor. I ask you for peace. I ask you whatever it is. I ask you for my family members salvation. Come boldly. How what gives us the right to come boldly? by the blood of Jesus, only by the blood of Jesus. Brethren, he says we have boldness to enter the holiest place 
by the blood of Jesus, not by our righteousness, not by our holiness, not by our knowledge, not by our doing, not by our will, not by our strength, but by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. We're not just saved by the blood of Jesus, although we are saved only by the blood of Jesus, but we're not just saved by the blood of Jesus. We also have been given access to the Father by the blood of Jesus. We've, given, we've been given access to the Father. Boy, I wish people would get a hold of this. Do you know that I believe all the problems in this world today are simply the result? All the problems in the world today, though they're origin, originally the result of Adam and Eve's sin, but all the problems that remain in the world today are the result of the ignorance that the body of Christ has about this verse right here and the one I'm talking about, about coming boldly. This verse right here in Hebrews 10, 19 is telling us the way in which we can come and enter the holiest place. And do you know that if we come boldly, there is a world around me that I impact by my life. There is a world around you that you impact with your life. There is a world around every human being that that human being impacts their piece of the world through their faith, through their attitude, through their gifts, through their serving or refusal to serve or refusal to impact. We're all, we all have a circle of influence. We all have a world that we can impact. You might not be able to impact a whole nation, but you don't have to impact a whole nation if you impact your piece of the world and I impact my piece of the world and somebody else impacts their piece of the world. All I'm saying is just do our part. Let's each do our part. And what can we do? We can come boldly into the holiest place by the blood of Jesus and we can start asking God, God, give us our family. God, give us give my family salvation. God, rescue my kids. God, deliver me from this addiction. God, heal me from this pain. God, fill me where there's emptiness. You can come boldly and you can receive. Please hear this is that if, if you truly went to God and spent time with your heavenly father easily, you have easy access. It wasn't easy for Jesus to pay the price. But now it's easy for us to receive what he paid for. And what is it? The greatest thing that he gave us to receive what he paid for is access, access to the father, access to the throne of grace. So number one, how do we spend time with God? We come boldly to the throne of his grace. Anytime. Look at what it says. When can we come boldly? Look at Hebrews 4, 16 again in the, I think the New King James Bible. Again, he says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace when to help when to help in time of need. When can we access the throne of grace? any time that we have a need. You don't even have to have a need, but if you do have a need, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and you can obtain mercy and find grace. Isn't it great? You're not going to find trouble. You're not going to find judgment. You're not going to find something bad about yourself. You're not going to find God's wrath. You're not going to find anger. You're not going to find worry. You're going to find grace. You're not going to obtain a sentence of judgment for the next season of your life. You're going to obtain mercy. You're not going to find something bad. You're going to find grace. You're not going to find difficulty. You're going to find grace. You're not going to find the devil anywhere near this throne 
for there is only access to this throne by the blood of Jesus. How do we spend time with God? We come boldly. Number two, how do we spend time with God? We ask freely. We ask freely. Number one, we come boldly. Number two, we ask freely. Look at this, what Jesus said in John 14, 14. It says, if you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. What a powerful verse. He says, if you ask me what anything. In whose name? Jesus name. And what will he do? He will do it. What is it? The thing you asked. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Boy, just to be sure that I'm not reading this wrongly or taking this out of context. Let's see what he says in John chapter 15, verse seven, John chapter 15, verse seven. Abide in me and let my words abide in you and you shall ask whatever you ask, whatever you desire, it shall be done for you. Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. This is spending time with God, asking freely, coming boldly to the throne of grace. How do we come by the blood of Jesus and asking freely whatever it is you desire? Ask him freely. There is going to be the devil whispering in your ear. Oh, you have all the bad desires. You have all the wrong desires. You can't ask him. See, that's this is the problem that if we if we try to explain every if we try to explain every way that the devil's going to lie to us, if we try to come up with reasons that the scripture doesn't apply to us, we'll find a reason. If we look for a reason that all that doesn't that can't mean me. If you look for a reason that it can't mean you, it won't mean you because you're looking for a reason to disqualify yourself. But God doesn't disqualify you. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. I bet there's some Christians saying, how dare you say that we could ask him anything? These are Jesus words, not my words. I'm just the messenger telling you what Jesus said. And if he only said it once, I'd believe it. But if he only said it once, maybe there'd be room to doubt it. But he says it here in John 15, 7. Then he says it in John chapter 14, verse 14. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. Well, that's two times he says it. Is there a third time? There's many, many times. How about this one in John chapter 14, John chapter 16, verse 23. He said, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the father in my name, He will give it to you. Woo. You know what we got? He says in this verse, he says in this translation, New American Standard. In that day, you will not question me about anything. So often we're questioning God. Are you sure that you mean that God? Are you sure you'll do this for me, God? I don't think God will do this. I don't think God will do that. I don't think I could get that. I don't think I deserve that. I don't think I can pray for that. We've been questioning him and he says, but in that day when the Holy Spirit comes and he's come now. Holy Spirit has come. Jesus came, went to the Father, sent the Holy Spirit to us. He said, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Boy, we don't even need. Matthew 7, 11, that says. Ask and you shall receive Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you. We could just go on and on. You have not because you ask not. We could say that one in James chapter four. We could use Psalm 37, verse four. He will give you the desires of your heart. I mean, when will we see that his grace has made a way for us? How do we spend time with God? Come boldly. How do we spend time with God? Ask freely. Is there something you'd like to ask God that you just feel like you don't deserve? Come boldly. Don't come boldly because you deserve it. Come boldly by the blood of Jesus and by that blood, ask freely. Woo! Somebody's got to say amen. Number three. How to spend time with God. Number one, come boldly. Number two, ask freely. 
Number three, expect joyfully. Expect joyfully. Picture yourself in, your, in the greatest memory you can have, in the greatest memory you can remember of Christmas morning and waiting up when you were a little kid, trying to stay up all night so that you could be awake to find your presence under the tree and open those presents. You expected joyfully if you had this kind of family tradition, maybe you didn't. But I'm sure there's something you can reference in your life where you were expecting something joyfully. Do you know that we can expect certain things fearfully or we can expect them joyfully? If we believe that God isn't good, we'll expect negative things fearfully. But if we truly believe God is good and he's good always and he's always good, then we will expect free. We will expect joyfully. There's joy in my heart. For whatever I ask the father for, for though I don't always feel like it might be coming, I don't always have any evidence that it might be coming. I don't have any history that it's ever come before. I still find joy in asking and expecting with joy. Look at what he says. Go back to John 16, 23. He says. And that day in that day, you shall ask me nothing. But verily, I say unto you, whatever you shall ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. And then look at what verse 24 says. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be made full. Wow. Ask and you shall receive that your joy will be made full. You know, I believe that what God's really after and that God's what God's really interested in is you experiencing joy, fullness of joy. It's not even the joy doesn't even necessarily come just because I'm going to get what I asked for. The joy comes for me anyway. I hope maybe this is true for you, too. The joy comes in knowing that my heavenly father wants me to ask and receive, and he wants me to have fullness of joy. What makes me happy, what gives me joy is knowing that my heavenly father wants me to have joy. He wants me to have the fullness of joy. It was his idea. Joy is his idea. Asking is his idea. Receiving was his idea. Joy being made full was his idea. All of these things are God's idea. Wow. Come boldly, ask freely, expect joyfully. And number four, receive confidently. Receive, he said, ask and you will receive. Receive confidently in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus says, therefore, I say to you. All things for which you pray and ask. Believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. He doesn't just say believe you will receive them. He says, believe that you have received them. When he says, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask. So once you pray and ask, believe that you have received the things you asked for and they will be granted to you. Oh, somebody might say, oh, I've tried that. It doesn't work. Listen, this isn't something to try. This is something to either believe as these are God's words. These are Jesus's words. And live this way or just decide you don't believe anything Jesus said because you don't have to go through many scriptures to find a verse like this. It's all over the Bible. It's all over the place. Speak to the mountain and it'll obey you. Ask and it will be given to you. This one especially 
is one that Christians have stumbled over and they just don't know how to deal with this. And it's really simple. Whatever you pray and ask for, believe you have received it. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I'm asking you right now. Save my family members that don't know you. And Lord, I'm asking this in Jesus name. And I believe that I've received it. This is where faith kicks in. I believe I have received it. Haven't seen it yet. He doesn't say you have to see it to believe it. He said, believe that you have received it and they will be granted to you. I have received it before it's been granted to me. I believe I've received it before it shows up. I believe I have received it. See, it's very simple. I believe I have received it. I'm, we've conditioned ourselves to think that we only receive something when we see it or feel it. But Jesus is teaching us a new way. He's reconditioning our mentality and our. The way we look at life, believe you have received it when when you've received it. No, believe you have received it when you pray and ask for it. Believe you have received it. It's how to spend time with God. That leads me to the next point. How do we spend time with God? Number one, come boldly by the blood of Jesus to the throne of grace. Number two, ask freely. Number three, expect joyfully. Number four, receive confidently. Believe you have received it, right? You see the difference? Don't believe I will. I believe I will receive it one day. Believe you have received it. And then number five, thank him continually. You want to spend time with God? You want to know how easy it is to spend time with God? Thank him continually. You know, if you don't have anything you want to ask for, if you don't want anything that you need to obtain some mercy and some grace about, if you don't need to ask and believe you received anything in life, you're happy and you have everything you need, fine. Then just go into this mode of spending time with God. Thank him continually. If you have everything you need, then you should be spending the rest of your life thanking him that he has provided for you and whatever you need. Thanks continually. Thank him continually. Thank him continually. That's why it says in. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18, for in this for this is the will of God in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, because all the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. He says, pray always in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God. Why does he say pray always? And then he says in everything, give thanks, because when we pray, we are asking and we're believing that we have received and therefore, for that reason, we are able to give him thanks. You're able to give God thanks for something you haven't even seen with your physical eye yet. But because he said you could ask and he said to believe you've received it when you ask for it, then we can step into a moment of giving thanks. And when we add one moment of thanks to another moment of thanks to another moment of thanks, this changes our life. Why? Because we're spending time with God, giving him thanks. You know, even communion, when you receive communion, that is really the the act of communion. The word literally translated Eucharist. It's giving God thanks for his grace. It's Eucharist. It's thanks. Charis for your grace. Thanks for your grace. Thanks for your free, your love that is given freely. And your grace that is given abundantly through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We reign in life in everything. Give thanks. How do we spend time with God? Thanks. Thank him continually. One, come boldly Two, ask freely. Three, expect joyfully Four, re receive confidently. Five, thank continually. Six, rest peacefully. Rest. Ephesians chapter two, verse six says that we have been he has seated us together. He's raised us up together and has made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's raised us up with him. 
and he has seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Rest peacefully. You know, taking a seat means having a moment of rest. When people have been walking in, they sit down, they sit down to rest. When you sit down to dinner, you sit down to rest. When you sit down on the couch, you sit down to rest. Rest peacefully because you have been seated with Christ in heavenly places. You don't have to strive and struggle to get things to happen. You are living life from a seated position in Christ. Man, when you believe this, this is where you this is where we live. We are seated together in the heavenly places in Christ and in the heavenly places. That means we're seated above the spiritual forces in heavenly places. We're not seated under the spiritual forces of darkness and accusations and the power of the devil and the enemy. We're seated above that because we're seated in Christ and Christ is above the devil and in him. We're above the devil, too. How do you spend time with God? It's really simple. Come boldly. It's really simple. Ask freely. Just take a moment and ask God, Lord, I'm asking you for my family's salvation. Expect joyfully. Oh, Lord, wow, I can't wait to see that happen because you know what? I know I'm going to see that. I will not despair because I believe I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That's spending time with God, just praying like that. Receiving confidently, Lord, I just asked you for that and I believe I have received it in Jesus name. Because you said to believe that you've received, you said to believe I've received it. So I receive it confidently. And Lord, I just want to thank you continually for all the yes and amens that are found in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Rest peacefully. You're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You already have the victory. So rest. It's a rest in your mind. It's really in your mind that you get weary. It's really in our minds that we that we quit. And number seven, share generously, share generously. This is how to spend time with God. Hebrews 13, 16 says, do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices. God is pleased Boy, he loves it when you share. When you share what? When you share. The gospel. When you share. Your story, when you share. Your time, when you share your money. When you share these things, you're spending time with God. You know, every time I give in the offering, I'm spending time with God because I'm giving it to Jesus. I'm giving it and thanking him for what he's done in my life. I'm not trying to buy anything from God. I'm I'm thanking him. Sharing generously is. The happiest place to be in life, Jesus even told us blessed more blessed to give than than when you receive. When we share generously, share our time, share our gifts, share our money, share our story, share the gospel. We are truly. Experiencing God. Literally. You are intimately experiencing God. I pray this ministers to you today. Thanks for joining me today. If you've never received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, I want to pray for you. Just pray this simple prayer out loud. Just say, Heavenly Father, I should just say that right where you're at. You want to be sure you're going to heaven when you die. Pray that Heavenly Father, I believe. Just say that out loud. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe Jesus rose from the dead. And. I. Receive the gift of salvation and relationship with you. Amen. It's that simple. If you prayed that prayer, would you let me know, please? Would you reach out to me through whatever platform you're watching this on or hearing this? Reach out to me. Let me know that you prayed this prayer. I want to send you a free gift. It's my book, The Power of a New Life. And it is the next steps. It's a Bible study. It's an interactive Bible study. The next steps of this journey with God. So would you make sure to download that? You can download it for free anywhere in the world on our website, lifechangerschurch.com. 
slash salvation or just lifechangerschurch.com and you'll find it there. Just look through the page and you'll find it or backslash back salvation. All right, I love you guys. I'm blessed to be on this journey with you. You're not alone. God loves you. He's not mad at you. He's mad about you. And therefore, everything's going to be all right. See you at our next service. God bless.